Silver doubling in price overnight. You wake up, you pull up the Kitco app, which is hopefully going to be back up and running soon so we can see the silver and gold spot price. But nonetheless, you check the price of silver and it's jumped from $24 to $48. Something exactly like that happened <clears throat> in the world in a rather strong major economy just last week. We're going to cover that, but we got a lot more to talk about as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Bear with me here. Because we got big trouble in the treasury market. We got bigger trouble brewing in the Middle East. It's super important that we stay on top of what's going on there. Um, and a $95,000 pickup truck. We're going to talk about that as well. And why there could be massive trouble coming down the pipeline for the U.S. automotive industry. But first, let's talk about this doubling of the silver price overnight. Like I said, you wake up. Up, you check the price of silver and you're at $48. What about silver going to almost $4,000 per ounce over a 10 year period? This happened to the people in Argentina in their local currency, but it's crazy what happened just last week. And I've got a chart. I'm not a big chart guy, but I've got a chart that's going to knock your, uh, your socks off. And why did it happen in Argentina? And could it happen? Could it happen in the United States? We're going to talk about all that because it could happen in the United States. We could wake up to the, to the doubling or tripling of the silver or gold price. I'm not predicting that it's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know that it will happen for sure any time in the future. But I was reading last night some interesting, insightful articles. You know, this guy Jim Rickards can, it talks about some pretty crazy numbers for the gold and silver price, the gold price in particular. There's some people out there that think that we could wake up to like a world revaluation of the gold price, and that would do the same thing to the silver price as well. Waking up one day to the, the doubling or the tripling of the gold price and the silver price. But let's talk about what happened in Argentina, okay? Because they woke up one day last week and realized that the price of silver in their local currency had doubled after an already spectacular run that it, it had had experienced over the last 10 years. But did the value, let's talk about this, the value of their silver double overnight? Not really, right? They still just had an ounce or 10 ounces, or if they're lucky, 100 or 1,000 or maybe 10,000 ounces of silver. The silver remains the same. Being measured in paper money, which in the case of Argentina is Argentinian pesos, or in the case of the United States, U.S. dollars, or in the case of Canada, Canadian dollars, or in the case of China, Chinese yuan, it doesn't matter, rupees in India, right? The silver and the gold remain constant. That's one of the things we love about it. But if you woke up last week in Argentina and you didn't own silver or gold, you were kicking yourself in the butt because your currency overnight had been devalued by 50%. Let's dig into this, okay? Let's dig into this. And here, let me show you this. Let's look at the chart, okay? Well, let's, let's go through this first, okay? On December 13th, last week, Argentina's new uh, economy minister, Luis Caputo, devalued the peso by 54% to 800 Argentinian pesos per dollar. This is an increase from the previous exchange rate of 366. This made the silver price actually more than double overnight because it they devalued the currency by 54%. The central bank will continue to devalue by 2%. They're adopting the Fed, uh, <laughs> the Jerome Powell method. The devaluation is part of uh, the new president, Javier Millet's shock therapy program to eliminate Argentina's primary fiscal deficit in 2024. The program also includes cutting energy subsidies, blah, blah, blah. So they devalued the Argentinian peso overnight by 54%. Let's look at what it did. Remember this chart? We talked about this one last week. This is silver 
a 10-year chart in silver, okay? There it goes. Starts in 2013 at 122 pesos. That's 2013. This is 10 years and goes through today, okay? Where we got the uh, where we have the price of silver in Argentinian pesos at 8,700, a 7,000 percent in 10 years in Argentina, 7,000 percent increase in the price of silver. Why did that happen? We'll talk about that in a little bit. But it so it sounds very familiar. But what happened? I'm going to move my finger over here. Over here, this is now. What happened last week? to the price of silver in Argentina in one day. Are you ready? That's what happened. It went all the way up to, where did I write it? There it is, 20,000 pesos, essentially. Overnight, guys, overnight. That's what happened to the price of silver in Argentina. Let me show you a 30-day chart. This shows it much more clearly uh, this is uh, November 20th through today. That's the price of silver in Argentina. 8,000 Argentinian pesos overnight went from 8,000 to almost 20,000 pesos. Right? Okay. Now, of course, that, that snap devaluation is what covered that or, or caused that unbelievable price spike. Uh, in silver in Argentina, but what really caused, I mean, over the, so over the last, let's do, let's do this, these are crazy numbers. Over the last 10, I've been to Buenos Aires. I spent a week in Buenos Aires about 12, 13 years ago. Okay, my heart goes out to those people. It's a sophisticated, they call it the Paris of South America. This is not a third world country. You know, it was a, it's a sophisticated economy. They have a lot of natural resources in Argentina. It's a beautiful city. It's beautiful people, quality. Everything about it was wonderful, okay? And we're seeing a, pro listen to this. Listen to what happened to the price, okay? Uh, after having gone up, over 70 times, silver went up over 70 times, 7,000% increase from November of 2013 through November of 2023. 70 times, okay? It went from 120 Argentinian pesos to 8,500 Argentinian pesos. In just one day, it went from about 8,500 Argentinian pesos all the way to 19,000 Argentinian pesos. So basically, in 10 years, if you lived in Argentina, 10 years ago, you could buy an ounce of silver for 120 pesos, Okay, that's about what it was when I was there. All right, so it went from 10 years ago, 120 pesos for one ounce, all the way to 19,000 Argentinian pesos basically today. That's a <laughs> that's 160 times increase in price in 10 years in silver, 160 times or Stated another way for you mathematicians out there, basement dwellers, and I'm so glad you're here. Guys, thank you for coming on to the live stream after the first one that was all messed up. Please give it a thumbs up. It's right down there. It helps get the word out. 160 times increase is the same as 16,000% increase. Somebody gave me a super chat. Hold on here. Hold on here. Bear with me, folks. I'm doing my best today. I'm doing my best. Here we go. Hold on. Super chats are important. I don't see it yet, but when I see it come through, I would love to say thank you. Oh, there we go. William B. Thank you, William, for the super chat. Super chats help me afford Christmas with twin 11-year-old girls. So much appreciated. Everything on the channel is free. You don't have to ever donate or give anything, okay? Super chats are super appreciated, okay? Uh, we have sponsors, Pimbex. P-I-M-B-E-X, right? If you were in Argentina uh, 10 years ago, you would have wanted to get your hands on some silver because your purchasing power would have been maintained. 16,000% increase in the price of silver. Could that happen in the United States? Guys, anything is possible. So if you want to be prepared... I'm not giving financial advice, but you might want to check out a place like Pembex, an online bullion 
dealer where you can buy gold, silver, and platinum. Excuse me. I'm a customer. They're a sponsor of the channel. Check them out. Okay, do your own work. You want to work with a company that you trust. I trust them. You want to work with a company that has great selection. Their selection is adequate or more than adequate for me. And you want to make sure, in my opinion, almost as important or more important than anything, that you maximize the amount of metal that you get. If you're a stacker like me, I want the most ounces for my Fiat Unicorn Fart Dust dollars. And I always find that Pimbex has that. Check out Pimbex. P-I-M-B-E-X. Pimbex is best. And if you ever get to a point where you want to convert an IRA into silver and gold, do yourself a favor and talk with them about what they offer in that area as well. So, 160, 160 times, 16,000%. If you take the current price of silver right now, $24 per ounce, and multiply it by 160, that's how much it went up over the last 10 years in Argentina. You get a silver price measured in U.S. dollars of $3,840. Uh, that makes our $85 prediction seem a little tame. And I'm not saying that we're going to get $4,000 silver in 10 years. I'm not. I'm just showing you what can happen when a country runs into financial difficulty. When a country, this happened in Argentina, takes on too much debt. And the world says, sorry, Argentina, we don't want your debt. And they have to default and do other things to, uh, to, to try to salvage their economy. Thank you. Man, another super chat. <coughs> William B., Sorry, guys, I'm going to take a drink of coffee here. Give me one second, okay? And we got important stuff to cover. You guys are so awesome putting up with me, and we all put up with each other, okay? So, yes, if we measured it in U.S. dollars, the last 10-year return that they had on the price of silver in Argentina... From today, at $24, you would get almost $4,000 silver. And we beg the question, what caused it? Financial mismanagement. The world saying no thanks to Argentina's debt. No, we won't loan you any more money, Argentina. The country making poor monetary and fiscal decisions, okay? You know, printing money, um, doing massive uh, deficit spending. Guys, doesn't that sound familiar? I mean, isn't that what's going on right now in the United States? Now, granted, we're in a little bit different situation, okay? We're not comparing apples to apples. <coughs> Financially, we're in the same situation, but we are the world superpower still right now. We do still have a very powerful military so it'll be interesting as we, I talked with Vince Lanchi about this. This is what fast, does this fast, I mean, this is what is uh, fascinating, not necessarily in a good way to me, because as we look out over the next 50 years, as my children grow to be around the age that I'm at, right, as your children or your grandchildren, you worry about yourself, number one, we got to take care of ourselves, but then our loved ones, our families, our friends, as we look out into this future, the next 50 years, we're, the United, we're heading into the future in a really bad situation. I think one of the best analogies I can come up with, I feel like the United States <laughs> is like a college student who took six years to get through college, partied up all the time, had just partied, 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 took six years to get through college, took out massive student loans to get through college, and is graduating with a degree in, like, um, archaeology or something, right? <laughs> I mean, nothing against archaeologists. I think it's fascinating. It's awesome. But uh, the jobs don't pay a lot, and it's really hard to get a job in archaeology, I would imagine. That's what the United States feels like to me right now. My country really feels like it's heading into these next 50 years with a boatload of debt and uh, prospects that aren't looking too bright. So, <coughs> excuse me. We'll see how this whole thing plays out. It, it's going to be an interesting uh, situation. Uh, have you noticed 
the stock market is back in bubble territory again. If you look at a chart of the stock market, the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, from about uh, October 26 through today, the last two months, the stock market has gone nothing but straight up. We're hearing the smartest minds in the room issue big, big warnings about the simple fact, and maybe you've noticed this as well, what does it mean when the stock market and the economy are completely disconnected from one another. When the stock market and the and Main Street, not just the, the, the whole economy, but in particular Main Street, mom and pop in particular, are completely disconnected from one another. The statistics are scary. You know them for individuals, right? Record debt, credit card debt, no savings, uh, pulling money out of 401. You know that whole story. But we've also got an increasing number of small businesses in this country that are dying and are claiming bankruptcy. How are we going to balance this big, massive disconnect? And at the same time, this is critical, guys. Do you understand that the debt market is way more important than the than the stock market. The debt market, look, I'm going to spin your head or anything like that, but it's so important to realize that the debt market is so much more important. And at the same time, we're getting reports, right, that the real inflation rate in the country is still high. Now, this all feeds into what we can expect in 2024 because... When you look at shadow stats, when you when you calculate inflation still now the same way they calculated it back in the 60s and 70s, we still have very high inflation. And we've got some doom predictions now coming for next year. Because as the Fed starts to cut rates and that inflation picks up even more, it skyrockets, we could see easily, easily next year bond rates skyrocketing okay let me i gotta ring the bell thank you coin shop chris i gotta ring the bell but the, the in, in bond mark in bond rates because the fed can't control the long-term bond rates 10 years plus they have a very 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 difficult time controlling those and if those skyrocket remember the, the chain of events the Fed cuts interest rates. That ignites another massive wave of real inflation. That makes bond rates explode higher. And then I'm going to tell you what happens because it's not good. But first, I got to ring the bell. You guys already have 150 thumbs up. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. This was basically a snap live stream <coughs> because the first one went bad for some reason. Thank you. Bell warning. Something about doing that I really like. So hopefully you can put up with that, my, my double hand wave. Inflation spikes next year. Rates on bonds spike next year. Okay? Doom. Because anyone out there, individuals, businesses, or governments around the world, right? Because there's a lot of countries like Argentina, that we talked about earlier, have a lot of debt are going to be liquidated, are going to be destroyed, absolutely destroyed, okay? We've talked about this many times already, the lag effect, right? There's a lot of companies going into 2024 that need to refinance a lot of debt. We got one big country in the world that has almost now $34 trillion in debt that needs to refinance a lot of debt, and that's all going to be at higher rates. But if we get the spike in inflation and then the associated spike in bond rates at the same time, it's going to be wipeout zone. So be prepared, okay? Did you hear this? Shocking! Are you ready to be shocked? I think we might have talked about this about a month and a half ago, but a headline yesterday, a shocking 40% of student loan borrowers missed their first payment after the pandem pandemic era freeze expired, okay? 
So they're making people start to pay on their student loans, essentially. That was whatever, November 1st, or I forget which month. 40% of people said, sorry, can't pay. Don't forget this. This is this. Most people don't know this. I didn't know this until the last six months, but I've heard it now from Andy Schechtman. I've heard it from, I think, Vince Lanchi brought it up. I've heard it from a number of reliable sources. You know, the biggest asset that our government has on their books is student loan debt, the money owed to us from student loans. And 40% of the people, there's a right now like a 40% default rate. What does that tell you? I mean, and how did we get in this situation anyway? I'm going to go on a, I'm angry. This makes me angry that, that this education system has turned into this, what I called indentured servitude in this country, that they brainwash and, and I'm not against higher education, okay? But they brainwash these kids that, oh, you got to go to college, you got to go to college. And you got, and then, oh, but take out loans, take out loans. You get all these kids coming out of college with massive debt, debt loads, right? It, to me, it's like indentured servitude. I think it should be illegal to, uh, to, to, to put people into debt so that they educate to a certain degree. I don't think college should be free forever, but... If people are working hard and trying to better themselves, which will then enable them to contribute more to the overall well-being of the country and the world, why should they have to be indebted for that? Remember indentured servitude? That was back in the colonial days. And if you wanted to come to America, you got on some dude's ship. But the deal was when you got here, you had to be like a slave for five years for somebody. And we were always taught, oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't, well... What are we doing to all these kids now? I digress. This is not. That's just a thought that I had. You may, you don't have to agree with me. I understand. But I don't think it's right. I always tell my kids, don't go into debt. Like, start a business. Become a welder. Right? Become Go get a job where the a company will pay for you to go to college. I don't know. Don't go into debt just to get a degree. I know, right? Oh, statistically, you'll earn more over your lifetime. Well, I don't know that that's really always true. I think it is generally-ish true. But anyway, I digress. In October, October, all right? Are you ready? <clears throat> the number of Americans delinquent on subprime auto loans hit the highest rate on record. Record number of people are doing Google searches. How do I give my car back? But the economy is great. Just ask Joe, right? Just ask Joe. He'll tell you it's working, right? But Bidenomics is working. It's great. <clears throat> Go get a third or fourth job. And it's okay if you can't afford your car to get there because you can just turn it in, okay? Or you don't have to pay your student loans. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Really a great, great time to be middle class in America. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Anyway, sorry. Boy, I'm off on a rant today. What about, well, let's talk about something on the world stage. And then let's talk about a major component of the U.S. economy, the auto sector. And we got, I think it's going to crash. I'm just going to tell you right now. But, but let's talk about something that's probably even bigger and badder. Um, uh, let me get a drink of coffee. We got two more big, interesting subjects to cover, guys. I really appreciate you being here. Please don't forget the thumbs up. It's a little thumb thing icon. It helps get the word out to more people. Okay, I'm back. Let's talk about what could skyrocket the price of silver and gold, skyrocket the price of oil, destroy the world economy. Are you scared yet? Right? I mean, we are scared. That's why, I mean, it's okay. I'm 53 years old. Do I still, I'm scared. Yeah, I'm scared about where the world's going. This is a big, we're going to, I'm going to make it real simple for you to understand what is going on right now in the Middle East, at least, this, at least this one component. I did a deep dive. We've got ships being attacked in the Red Sea. So if you look at the Red Sea on a map, okay, it's a big, long sea. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it looks like a, uh, like a banana, I guess you could say almost, shaped like a banana. 
On the northern end, you have the Suez Canal. On the southern end, you have the, hold on, let me get the name of this. Uh, the Bab El Mandab Straits. That's by Yemen. There's like two choke points, okay, where ships have to go through. That's the Red Sea. So you got the Red Sea, and then a little bit to the east, you have the Persian Gulf. And the Persian Gulf has uh, the Straits of Har the Straits of Hormuz, right? You probably heard of that. It's a little skinny area where boats have to go through. So you have the Persian Gulf over here, and then you have the Red Sea over here. Uh, there's so much energy traffic, so much exports that go through those areas, go through the Persian Gulf, right? You ever heard of that stuff called oil, it, like runs the world economy? But we're having major issues in the Red Sea. Ships are being attacked. Uh, I believe they said 100 ships were attacked just recently, and they're making it out like Iran is behind all this. Why is that a big deal? Because there's all, so much of the world's energy, so much of the world's commerce, it's like a shortcut, right? Otherwise, you have to go all the way around Africa, and it takes like 30 more days. I'm, it's pretty interesting. I would recommend you look, look at it. But it's a powder keg situation. So we have the United States that just recently said they were putting together a coalition to protect shipping in the Red Sea because we've got a lot of interest over there. To, to, just to show you how big of a deal this is, uh, BP has halted, British Petroleum has halted shipments through the Red Sea because, again, on the northern end, you have the Suez Canal with Egypt, I think it is, and on the southern end, you have the Bab El Mandab Straits, and that's by Yemen, and that's where um, that's where all these ships are being attacked. I'm telling you, it's a powder keg situation. And when you look at oil shipments that are are going to Europe, natural gas shipments, but it's not just that; it's all types of things going from Asia to Europe. And the fact that now they may have to go all the way around Africa, that adds like 30 days and significant cost to the trip. This could be, this could send shockwaves through the world economy. But more importantly, right, because we don't like war. I don't like war. I'm again, I'm personally, again, I think we could, we is, be, just take two seconds for me to say that as human beings, and I will ring the cowbell, I just saw we got 200 thumbs up, you guys are the best, that we don't need war in this world, right, that maybe we could advance as a species to the point where we realize there's no benefit to us blowing ourselves or anything else up, but nonetheless, that's what's going on, and it's not a pretty situation in the Middle East. You've got Iran, Syria, Russia, China. The whole world is involved in this Red Sea corridor, right, with the, I need to memorize this, the Bab El Mandab Straits, and then the Suez Canal to the north. <clears throat> it's getting very, very precarious, and it's, it's so important right to, to to the world economy that like i said the, the the west has put together a coalition but what's interesting is the coalition is basically made up of g7 countries okay it's not the arab countries that are joining this coalition to protect the shipping route we have major east versus west conflict going on and it could get very 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 interesting hey you guys you did it we got 200 thumbs up you are awesome let's ring the bell huh that's the bell warning the 200 I feel like I grew, I grew up as a Catholic, like when I'm, I ring the bell at the Bears to remind them that their blindfolds come off when we get to $2,500 gold, $85 silver, $2,500 platinum, right? It's like when the uh, the Catholic priest would come by with the incense in the church. We're letting these guys know they're on they're on alert. You know, happy days will be here. We will get rid of the blindfolds, guys. Don't worry, right? You know, I forgot to show you this. I got another fun chart. This is Venezuela, the price of silver. Uh, this happened in four months in Venezuela. It went up 27,000%, okay? 
uh, went from 36 point, 36 bolivars to almost 10,000 bolivars, right? Guys, this can happen. This can happen, all right? So be prepared. We could get a, uh, uh, an unbelievable reaction in the Middle East. Let's hope for peace. Let's hope that we figure out that we'll be better off getting along. But the reality doesn't look good. The Israel situation, factoring in Iran, the Houthis, Lebanon, Syria, Russia, China, uh, the, everything going on over there, it sure appears like it's a, it's a powder keg. So just be mentally prepared. We're going to hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. Um, 26 days are being added to the shipping. That That is a significant cost increase. And if you want to ship something by air, that costs like four or five times as much to ship things by air as opposed to through the Red Sea, you know, to get things to Europe, things from Asia that are going to Europe. So be, be prepared. Um, is the trucking, or I'm sorry, is the auto industry in America crashing? Yes. All right, coin shop, Chris would like for me to remind you, basement dwellers, that we appreciate you being here. And I want to remind you that you are the most important part of Ron's base. Be honored if you join us on a little more permanent base. And you can do that by subscribing to the channel. It's subscribe to Ron's basement. And what you'll find here are a lot of quality, smart, intelligent people that are very super nice, right? And you'll find like a community where you belong. We want you to be here. It's a big deal. This is not RonTube. It is YouTube. I try to say that every day. It's not about me. It's not about my basement. It's about us, you as an individual joining us and us coming together to talk about what we love. Silver, gold, right? The precious metal sector, what's going on in the world. And right now we're going to talk about the auto industry crashing. I'm hearing it from everywhere. In particular, what's the most profitable segment of the U.S. auto sector? Do you know? You might say, oh, electric cars. No, no, no. Sedans. No. Pick them up trucks. Pick up trucks. Pick up trucks. That's where they make all their money, right? Big money. I used to have an old Toyota pickup truck. Somebody taint, painted it, tainted it pan. Tainted it pan. I was trying to say painted it tan. And the guy that sold it to me said the color is called old man tan. <laughs> anyway, pickup trucks, right? They're like the, the they're synonymous with USA. Right, they're they're just more millionaires own Ford F one fifties than any other vehicle in this country. That used to be the fact. I haven't heard that for a year or so, but anyway, a lot of millionaires at minimum. Where does Ford make all their money? Where pickup trucks? Pickup trucks are piling up. They're going to have to start stacking them on top of each other. You know, like flip the one over and put the beds like making like those Chinese puzzles out of them because pickup trucks are piling up everywhere. And does it make sense to you? <clears throat> a lot of these pickup trucks now, they start at like $50,000 for a pickup truck. And it's not unusual to see a like a nice pickup truck, you know, because now they, they fancy them up with all kinds of leather interior and all kinds of crazy stuff. The pickup trucks for like ninety ninety five thousand dollars. Hold on a second. Sorry, I woke up a little bit of a sore throat and I keep coughing or feeling like I have a something. Anyway, um, the same trucks that cost forty three thousand dollars just like three and four years ago, like forty thousand. We thought that was a lot for a pickup truck. Now, on average, cost seventy to seventy-five thousand dollars. We are who can afford? What did we talk about earlier? The subprime sector sector of the auto loan industry. People are walking away from the cars. Who in middle America, if you're making a hundred k a year, or even a couple, two couples working together, making one hundred and fifty thousand a year. Can you afford a truck payment that's, you know, if you've got great credit, 
maybe $1,200 a month, but not everybody has great credit, especially in middle America. Can you afford a truck payment of $2,000 a month? And why in God's holy earth, I didn't mean, I'm not taking the Lord's name in vain there or anything like that, but why in the world, I'll say it that way, God's world, but anyway, why would you want to pay $2,000 a month for a pickup truck? You know, it's like a status symbol for a lot of people, but people can't afford it. Even Toyota, which has had, you know, record shortages, their trucks, their pickup trucks are starting to pile up. And they're like $70,000, $75,000. And remember what makes it even more interesting. Think about this. Remember just like seven, eight weeks ago, the UAW was on strike. So we had like a slowdown in production of trucks, but the dealerships are getting piled up with these pickup trucks. Nobody's buying them. I wonder why. Because in Bidenomics, nobody can afford to buy the pickup trucks. So we're heading into a situation, guys, uh, that, that does not look good for what's going on, right? Is, do you think Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve knows that pickup trucks are piling up at the dealership? Do you think maybe that's why Jerome, you know, does Jerome drive a pickup truck? Does Jerome know, right? And, and that's just an example of what's piling up. I've got friends that are executives in the logistics industry. The last I checked with them, they, they talked about how shipping is just doing horribly and that everybody in almost every business has inventory piling up, piling up, and piling up because people can't afford it, right? People can't afford Thank you, Cliff. Wow, thank you. Hold on. You said something. I want to read what Cliff said. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'll try to get to it here, Cliff. Now the computer's acting up. I tell you what. I got a great piece I want to read to you from, I'm going to call him the Canadian brain, and it has to do with precious metals and demand for silver and gold. This guy is very smart. Hold on a second. William B., that was earlier. Thank you for the super chat. But we've got a piece of what I would call keen insight um, about what's going on right now. Sorcerer Stan, Merry Christmas! Hot dog, silver bear! <laughs> All right, let's get to this. Hold on a minute. Hold on a second. Bear with me. My dad used to always say that. Do you have things that your parents used to say that stick with you? My dad would always say, bear with me. He would also say, when he would get mad at me, is, I'm going to tell you something right now. And I'm going to tell you, basement dweller, something right now. This came from our friend, Mr. Zub, the Canadian brain. Very smart guy. I did an interview with him a few weeks ago. Hold on here. Let me read you what he said. I thought this was excellent. Here we go. This was his takeaway. Now, we know Costco sold $100 million worth of gold in their first quarter, the last three months, basically. They just, they just reported this. $100 million worth of gold. This is what Mr. Zub said. He said, Ron, my main takeaway for this is there is a significant segment of the population that is loosely familiar, loosely familiar with the benefits of owning precious metals, but have no clue how to buy them. And I would agree with that, right? Like we know how to buy precious metals. I recommend personally, right? For me, Pimbex. We've talked about that already, but most people don't really know how to buy precious metals. Don't forget guys, we can get to 300 thumbs up and I'll ring the gong, that gong, that golden gong right there. Now, nonetheless, in the thumbs up things right down there, it looks like my thumb, okay? Yes, thank you, please, thank you. All right, so, there's a lot of people that are loosely familiar. Let's get back to the Canadian brain, Mr. Zub's comment here. Loosely familiar with the benefits of owning precious metals, but they have no clue how to buy them. Um, they have enough good sense to not just trust any dealer they find in their town 
or online, which is a good thing, right? They're 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 not they're like I don't I don't know who to trust, blah blah blah. Like I said, for me, I absolutely trust Penbex, okay, but nonetheless, this group will evolve into a secondary wave, excuse me, of retail buying that will bust the dam when price moves become the news of the day. I agree with them 100%. There's us, right? We already buy precious metals. And then there's this next level of people that might be like three or four times us that know like the lady that we bought our new family room couch from who said, all my friends are buying silver and gold, right? Blah, blah. You know, there's this group of people that know um, and, 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 they, and they may not, they don't know who Atmex is. They don't know who SD Bullion is. They don't know. I get the question all the time about local coin shops here in St. Louis. They don't know, right? But they know Costco and they trust Costco, right? So they feel comfortable buying gold from Costco. So that whole group of people will grow and grow and grow. And I think that's what Tim said, right? Like when, 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 the, mo when the price of silver and gold become the news of the day. When will the price of silver? Thank you, Mr. Zub. I used to call him Zub, but it's Zub. Zub. <laughs> it's important to know how to pronounce people's names. Uh, anyway, when will the dam break? The dam... I think could break next year. Do you, does it make sense to you that as the Fed cuts rates next year, okay, that we could set off a massive wave of inflation? Think about it, right? We are, the, the real inflation numbers are already really high. Sorry, Susie's banging on something upstairs. Hold on a second. Everything okay? Susie! Susie! Everything okay? Oh, what are you banging? Oh, she was banging. She was banging our. She was banging our. <laughs> we have a we have a very old refrigerator. She was banging the ice maker. Um, um, <laughs> that didn't sound right. Anyway, next year, Fed cuts rates. Right. For those of you who don't know, Susie's my wonderful wife. She's uh, runs the channel. Her username is Susie's House. Back to the story. Fed cuts rates, we've already got real inflation. Check shadow stats, right? That could set off a wave. I mean, a massive wave of new inflation. At that point, think about these people like Mr. Zub's talking about. Not us, but everybody else. All my neighbors who all have master's degrees and bachelor's. Some even have doctorates. Anyway. They're all, they all kind of know right now, right, what's going on. And then if we get this next wave of inflation, they're all going to be like, oh, my God, it's happening again. It's happening again. Prices are skyrocketing. I'm gonna, that's when they're all going to rush. They're going to rush into silver and gold. And we're already there, guys. We're already there. That's how I see that playing out. Now, what's the other? What's the other? <laughs> It's going to go one way or the other. This oh, soft landing, Fed, Wizard of Oz, fantasy world, no. The other situation, and we already see this developing now, which is going to prompt the Fed to aggressively cut rates. Think about it, guys. If Jerome Powell telegraphed to the market last week that they're going to cut rates, why would he be doing that? He's doing that because he's scared. He's doing that because he knows Ford F-150s are piling up on dealership lots. He knows Americans are out of money. He knows that demand across many sectors of the economy are going down, that we have deflationary forces. He knows that the lag effect of all those previous rate cuts he did are, are still still are still now just gaining momentum and pushing down prices that is deflation okay we just talked about what they do when they cut rates and set off inflation but first we could absolutely have a deflationary drought spike whatever prices going down and that will that will elicit responses from the fed we talked about this right the, 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 it's like kryptonite to superman they are scared to death 
of deflation. And when deflation hits and they start to act and act aggressively and act very much in the open, and I think we just got a taste of that last week, we're going to see silver prices and gold prices potentially absolutely skyrocket. All right. We are moving into we are moving into a year on many levels, right? Politically domestically here in the United States, geopolitically in the world, where there's going to be so many conflicting forces, it's going to be a little too much for old Gomer Powell, or Jerome Powell, I'm sorry, Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve to handle. We're going to see, we're going to, see, you know, panic could ha could ensue, right? And, and who was I? Oh, I was talking to my friend last night, uh, Chris. He's an attorney. He's now a college professor. Very smart guy. He was calling. We were talking about the economy. Chris, the lawyer, not coin shop Chris. And, um, and he was talking about, yeah, he's moving his investments into more tangible assets, real things. And, and I said, you know, uh, you, we got to remember, it's like silver and gold, any real asset, it's a real thing. Sure, temporarily. Fiat money, electronic money, derivatives, all that stuff that John Extra talked about <coughs> with Extra's Pyramid, it can exist. It's a little temporary show. This has happened many times throughout history, guys. Tulip bulbs at one point were considered to be a very smart investment, right? If you were walking around talking to your neighbors 300 years, 400 years ago, there was a tulip bulb mania. They'd be saying, hey, tulip bulbs. Right? Bitcoin. Uh, paper dollars. Right? So we've been through this before. Silver and gold, oil, land, anything you can hold on to that's real. Right? Uh, maybe maybe even, I don't know, I'm not into art, but whatever. Break like real things. That's what, that's what lasts. They're always there. Right? They're this constant, steady force. You get these things that come and go, hey, tulip bulbs, oh, you know, uh, all types of makes and models of fiat currency, they're all there. I need to ring the gong three times. <coughs> we got 300 thumbs up. That's a big deal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are you ready? This is for you. 500 people. Wow. Thank you. I'll be honest, when that gong showed up, that's from our good friend Stu, I was like, hey, a gong, right? I was, it's become one of my favorites. And we got a train whistle, right? For the days when we get to 400 thumbs up, that came from Don the Brain, and it's a lot of fun. But as the channel grows and we get 400, we're going to do all aboard the silver train. <laughs> all aboard the silver train. Because uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting. What's going on with Kitco? You know, Kitco is like the biggest website in the silver and gold sector. It's been down now for what? Like three days? Two and a half? Three days? <coughs> Does that make you a little suspicious? And we're not getting really any, any new information except that it was a cyber security uh, 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 a problem that occurred. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. You know, it's an interesting development, an interesting pro uh, prospect in terms of what's going on. Who knows? I'm not going to uh, speculate as to what uh, as to what happened. But let's just review real quickly, guys. Don't forget that if you lived in Argentina, you woke up last week, right? You're in Argentina and you own a bunch of silver and you're you're like, you're an American, if you're in America, right? Let's, a lot, some of you aren't, wherever you are, whatever currency you think in, Americans think in U.S. dollars. So you wake up, right? And all of a sudden, the silver price, instead of being $24, is $48. That happened last week in Argentina. They went to sleep and, here, let me look here. They went to sleep. And the price of silver was about 9,000 pesos. They woke up, and it was about 20,000 pesos. Okay? It can happen. And it happened as a result of a, of, a, of a rash devaluation of the currency. 
There are some people out there <coughs> that say that like even the BRICS countries or whatever could do that, could they could announce a revaluation of the precious metals. And the United States can't control more than, you know, 50% of the world if that were to occur, right? But I think the key thing for us to remember with Argentina is while they're much smaller than the United States, there's a lot of similarities between what caused their problem with their currency and, and what is causing potentially a problem with the U.S. dollar. I don't like it. You don't like it. I imagine you're like me, like you don't like debt. We don't, we are not debt oriented people. We are value oriented people. Do you own silver and gold because you want to be your own central bank? Is that one of your reasons? I tell you what, I'm going to see how many of you feel that way. I'm going to type it in the chat. Uh-oh, I lost the chat. Hold on, it's coming back. There it is. I'm going to type CB, big C, big B, because I want to be my own central bank. I want to be able to uh, protect my wealth, protect my assets, protect my family, right? And the, for me, the best way to do that is by owning silver and gold. I wonder how many CBs we can get, huh? <laughs> yes, look at that. Hey, sassy silver. Oh, guys, before we forget, huh? We know eight is great here in the basement, right? We know what the S word is, stagflation. We know what the D word is. It can either be depression or deflation, which is kryptonite to the to the uh, to the Fed. We know what the C word is, right? Confluence. <laughs> There's some other words we have too, but we also know that eight is great, and we type eight for the moderators because the moderators are great, okay? Uh, so please give them some eights. That would be much, much appreciated. Um, yeah, so the, as, we, as, we, as we move into the coming year, months, and quarters, guys, there's just not that much of a difference between little Argentina and big United States, especially within the context of how the world is bifurcating right now, especially within the context of the fact that we have really two potential powder keg situations in the world, the war in Ukraine and the war in Palestine, the whole Middle East situation. Look, they called they called for a, uh, a ceasefire last week in the United Nations, most of the countries of the world. The United States said, no way, we don't want a ceasefire. So this situation... Whether we agree with it or not, we just have to, we, you know, we don't control it, so we have to do our best to understand what's going on. Could become much more uh, uh, exaggerated. Hey, thank you for being here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We still have three more days to get the $2,100 gold by Christmas. We'll see how that works out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.